Hello again, everyone, and welcome back aboard Felicity, November 8033 Foxtrot, a Cessna flight training device that I built here at home. Today we are rejoining the pilot club as we travel down to headquarters where the pilot club was founded at. Um, should be a, a good flight, a fun flight. Um, um, oh, um, College Park is where we're going. I probably should have mentioned that. Uh, Kilo Charlie Gulf Sierra uh, is going to be our destination, and we're departing out of uh, Pennsylvania Valley, Penn Valley, Kilo Sierra Echo Gulf. Um, going to try something a little different today. So not only do I fly with these guys on the VATSIM Virtual Air Traffic Simulation Network, um, you know, I'm, I'm also part of the you know the, that same group on Discord, and we kind of. Um, have two different chats going on, so I'm going to try and bring that audio in as well. So you're going to kind of hear three audio sources: um, the VATSIM audio, uh, Discord audio, and uh, you know myself as well. Um, hopefully it should. Uh, hopefully it works all right. And doesn't uh, doesn't uh, be too terrible. So. All right, we'll be right back. Know how it looks for you guys. Um. Yeah, it looks decent for me, I think, in, in FS 2020 anyways. Um, airport has a lot of history. I won't bore you with all that there, but uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Wright was, was there as an instructor. And um, uh, what else? I'm trying to remember there. Um, no. What other kind of highlights uh i think the airport had a lot of aviation firsts in there i think um government airplane was out of that airport um and then ah it's too much to mention anyways i'll, I'll post some of the highlights for you guys to to know or, or are we going to be here forever <laughs> and not get off the ground from uh pen valley pen valley but um, a couple of admin notes I'd like to mention, as always, uh, follow the, uh, the formula, right? Aviate, navigate, communicate, and the, uh, let me look at what do we have for controllers. Um, about that a little bit later, but uh, I think we have DC Center is on. So we'll, we'll address that, but uh, please be professional on the network, as always. Um, if, you're on, if we're on Unicom, then announce your calls, all that good stuff, right? We, we, uh, we strive to be as professional as possible on the network. Um, if we are controlled, obviously uh, comply with uh, instructions. There's going to be a few sort of hot spots, a few points. Paulie will point out uh, that we need to stay away from. This area here for real. What? Oh, we're not going to talk about the cat right now. What? And we have. Because we're listening to the story about the airport. All this, obviously, so the three Class Bravo airports all in this small space, so it's very congested. Um, now. The special flight rules that they have established for, for this area are not going to apply uh, to VATSIM, so no worries there. But normally you, you would have to get special training, uh, special yeah, class from FAA to get certified to fly in this airspace. And then obviously request clearances uh, to go through this um, SFRA. Not applicable to us. Uh, anyways, back to admin notes. Um, just wanted to mention a couple of things. So the screenshot contest is still going on. The giveaway is still going on. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, please uh, take a look. Everything I mentioned is on the website. So if you if you check out the website, you'll, uh, you'll get all the info there. Uh, if you are using a club call sign... Uh, make sure you indicate in, in your flight plan That's our marks, static air. call sign pilot club, and then for everybody, if you That's file a cabin flight air plan, that turns our fans uh, on, please put the following: operate You can by pull it when we get up in the air. That way, we get credit with that uh, for this being a club flight. 
uh, in a Discord should be your first name followed by your call sign. That way it's, you can easily see in the Discord who's who. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, you get, uh, as all of our flights currently, you get 250 points uh, for flying. And if you're using the uh, Pilot Club call sign, you get 500 points. All right. Uh, training, I'm not going to mention, but we do have it. So if you guys are interested, look into that on the website. And I think that's pretty much all I have. I was able to do it in about six minutes. So that's good. I'll turn it over to Polly, and Polly will give you uh, a departure briefing and, and route overview. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll post some cool facts about about this trip and about the airport um, in chat. So in general aviation channel, Polly. Perfect. Thank you, Serge. Guys, first things first. Just remember, it's easier for all of us to have your uh, to see each other with your uh, lights on. So make sure at all times even when you're up in the air, just always have your land lights taxed. At least everything is fully on. Um, yeah, this flight is going to be a good one heading down to the pilot club headquarters. Um, so we're going to depart out of here. Serge was right. We're going to climb up the 3,500. Head south. We're going to head towards that Harmon Airport. It's that little private field, which is uh, zero Papa Sierra 7. After that, you're going to go slightly southeast. Avoid that R5802 restricted airspace. Go down to Rover Field. Or I should say Regal Field. Regal. And then from there, so straight south. Now you're going to see that there's airspace out of Harrisburg, which is the um, that special uh, airspace. Jeez, uh, I already forgot the name of it. <laughs> I'm just trying to do everything off of memory here. Sorry, guys. But, um,. Basically, we're going to try to do that SFR, the TRS, TRSA, Harrisburg Airspace. That's what it is. Thankfully enough, we don't need to check in. This whole flight is going to be basically not controlled. If you guys get reached by a controller, you're doing something wrong. And, uh, you know, the whole point is kind of avoid airspaces and uh, try to navigate around. So, right from the... N71, which is the Dongal Springs Air Park. We're going to hit the river. We're going to follow that river southeast all the way down pretty much straight until that fix CB, CIB, CIDOV. From there, you're going to go west, southwest. And we're going to go to that payload intersection. And you're going to watch out for that restricted airspace of the R4001B. And that's about it, guys. I mean, right from there, we're going to just duck below that Class Bravo airspace, which is the Baltimore airspace. And we'll be on the outermost ring. And if you look at your sectional, it is 3,500. So as long as we're below 3,500, we'll be good. And like I said, as soon as we get to part out of here, we'll hit 3,500. And as soon as we get to roughly that swan intersection is when we're going to drop down 3,000 um, And then that's it. Like I said, it's just basically staying below the class Bravo airspace. And this will be simulating real-life procedures by us following this route. Now, I'm sure most of you guys all saw and read the information. And I'm sure I hope all of you have information, Alpha. I know a lot of you repeated that flights going forward i'm gonna stop putting the information at the end of the uh narrative but i know it's a lot kind of to take in but i'm sure you guys kind of see it on the map that i listed out and everything so um yeah like i said it's simulating the real life procedures but unfortunately vat sim they don't uh simulate it which is no biggie i guess they do it for you this will be a fun flight. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, I don't want to a Aiden. Bit. Any questions? Yeah, Paulie, I have a quick question. So, uh, just to confirm, uh, when we travel November 71, you said we're going to follow the river um, southeast. And then we're going to uh, right to that uh, intersection, Charlie, India, Delta, Oscar, Bravo, Sido, but whatever it's called. Yeah. Are we tr so we're, are we, we're staying away from the um, uh, SATR, right? The um, 
uh, the, the circle there. That's the uh, oh, what's it called? It's the uh, yeah, the SATR right there. Stop. SATR. That's SATR. Is it, at, is it at the CIDOB? Uh, yeah, it's crosses. Yeah, it crosses right there. Are we? Uh, so that's. Oh yeah, the R, the R4001A, right? Nope, the one that's, uh, I'm trying to find out what, uh, specifically what the, the, um, I think it's the, uh, no, I can't tell you what it is specifically. It's, um, it says SATR down to 18,000. It's basically like this big circle around this. Is this the, uh. Mm. Really? Hang on, let me go to uh, Sky Vector. Wow. Yeah, can you take a look? Because it, um, I mean, it touches that point and then we, we cross into it. <laughs> or you know what it is? It's Washington, D.C. VFR speed restriction. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it says all VFR aircraft uh, okay, restricted to an airspeed of 230 or less. Okay, not applicable to us. Okay, disregard. I'm still interested in what that is, though, because I'm staring at this thing. I don't see that. Yeah, let me, uh, you want me to stream my screen? Yeah, yeah, do it real quick. I just want to take a look at it. All right, let's go ahead and get started up here. All right. Circuit breakers are in. Alternate static is in. See track, alright, it's good. ABNX are off. Autopilot is off. Carpet is off. Mixture for rich. Prop high. Throttle slight. Primer. Yes, we'll use the blue one. Two. Three on the primer. Alright, brakes on. Clear prop. Alright. Uh, aircraft in front of me. Don't see anybody though. Clear on the left, clear on the right. Master on, beacon on. Uh oh. Start. Alright. Oil pressure's in the green. Alright, flaps going up. Okay. Avionics going on. Nope. It, 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 yeah, it kicks me out. Sorry. Um, I know, Biggie. Uh, yep. give, me, give me like two quick seconds. I'll pull this up on the, on the computer. Yeah, that's what I I mean, it's not going to be applicable to us, but still. No, but I just want to see why my sectional... I don't know, unless I'm losing something. Thing. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. I see that on the. It's, it's like yeah. black with the white around it. Yeah, so that's the circle. That's the uh, speed restriction. Oh, okay. So but now, oh wait, it's not applicable to us. It's too. It's wait, I'm going to go back. To the where does it say? The... Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Oh, you're pulling really quick. Like I can. Yeah, on the fourth flight, I can look and then it tells me what the circle is, but here it doesn't, on the left version, it doesn't tell me, but it's this big circle right here. Yeah, yeah, I see that. That's right, interesting. 
No, what I like about it too is um, this flight like was good learning experience because I learned a lot about uh, different types of airspaces and what to enter and what not. Yeah. Especially that um, Harrisburg SFRA. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. TSR, TRSA. I had no idea what those really were. I learned a lot. Yeah. Setting up these flights really has helped my knowledge greatly. But that's why I wanted to know about that ring because I didn't see that. But now, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like I said, this airspace is very, very um, unusual, you know, for obvious reasons, but it is what it is. Yes, sir. But past that, guys, any other questions before we get going? Um, yeah, um, since I'm still kind of new, just make sure I'm on the right page. We're going to be, you said if we get contacted by a controller, we shouldn't be contacted by a controller unless something goes squirrely. So I'm guessing we're just going to be on Unicom? Yeah, 122.8 the whole time. I mean, I want, like I said, I wanted to, and I actually even reached out to them, and they re even said that we can have coverage for this flight. I denied it just yeah. because I wanted it to be, you know, an uncontrolled flight, because, again, there's so many airspaces to avoid that if you do enter into one a little bit, they will message you, so. <laughs> yep. Uh, other question. I see New York Center is online. Do we need to at least get off the ground in contact with Center? And then when we're in the air, switch to Unicom? Or how does that work? No, just uh, this is an uncontrolled field. Uh, the whole flight, just all Unicom. Yeah. Just making all the standard Unicom yeah. calls. Yeah. Oh, your typical pattern calls, all that stuff. All right. Yeah. I'm sure you guys will. Yeah, no problem. It's, this is. I get something a little off. I think even Serge, he had asked me what the level of this flight was going to be, and I didn't even think he put that it was a beginner flight or a novice flight, because, uh, no, you know, it's, it will go easy on this flight, it's no big. That's me, yeah. for sure, the novice. Okay, stop. I think the, the biggest thing wait, here, wait, and I wait. think the, the learning experience in this, is to stay away from these things, the, the uh, Bravos, the, uh, um, uh, restricted airspaces, so if you have... A moving map, it helps uh, tremendously. Um, any kind of moving map, okay, uh, paid or free, where the, the one that shows you airspaces and, and restrictions and stuff. Uh, because then you'll, I mean, some people call it cheating a little bit, but it's just situational awareness, right? Um, uh, so that, you know, so that you're not going into these, you know, airspaces that you're not supposed to be at, you know, so... I think that's the the value of this flight here, and, and is being in this very unusual airspace is is kind of like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, Bravos are everywhere, but uh, it's just it's congested, and you got you got to stay clear of those um, um, areas, anyways. So, uh, uh, Polly, what uh, we're taking off uh, three five? Is that three right? five? Three five. And Heading just so you guys know, uh, maybe it's a little too soon, but uh, the winds favor uh, three three on uh, at uh, at College Park. So taking off three five, and three five is what we're making. Uh, can you walk us through just for the benefit of uh, some of the guys here um, our, our takeoff procedure on thirty five? Yeah, so right off the bat, guys, we'll just make a Unicom call saying, uh, you know, I was going to say Pilot Club 25 taxi to runway right, 35. Transponder and of going course, on. there's really no taxiway since the taxiway, we're already, <laughs> we're already at the departure runway anyways. We're going to take off. Since below it, there's no right uh, mention of right traffic pattern or anything, left-hand traffic. So what we're going to do is, as soon as you depart up, make left crosswind, then to a left downwind. And then we'll depart south on the left downwind off of 3-5. Perfect. Uh, towards uh, Harmon. Perfect, yep. You so, know, you know, all, once you turn yeah. on the, the crosswind to clear the runway? Yeah, I, I would say climb up to, I mean, every, I don't know, my instructors all said something different, but ours is like 800 feet or almost at pattern altitude is when you make your crosswind turn. Yep, yep. <laughs> Can I get a Discord radio check, please? Perfect, Michael. Welcome. But yeah, All right, Jacob, any questions, though, feel more than free. Like I said, this is a, definitely a good flight to ask questions. We'll all be on Unicom. We're all here to help. So, Unicom, 
is short range anyway, right? So if I ask a question about making oh. the call, it'll be all right. Or... Uh, you can just use uh, Discord if you got a quick use question. Discord for questions, okay. No problem. Yeah. Making sure. But the, the Unicom does have a virtual range of 30 nautical miles. So yeah, 15 and 15. Thanks. Yeah, that is true. But yeah, if there's nothing else, we will get going. So what we'll do is we'll go in order. Jacob, if you want to go last, so you get you can hear all the radio calls, feel more than free. Usually I start first. Serge will follow up on the end, and then we'll just go in order. Uh, Chandler, Julian, then Michael, and then Serge. Perfect. Okay. All right, so I'll make the call on you to come in one quick sec. And then right after that, you guys can all just stop following in. And for spacing, uh, we can keep it kind of tight. I mean, you know, we don't have to do no formation flying or anything like that. But if you guys want to all stay in, you know, and even like a two or three nautical mile distance, that's absolutely fine, too. And if anybody passes me a little bit, that's fine. But just be aware of, you know, where you're going to the right fixes and just avoid that airspace. Again, that's just what this flight's about, is avoiding airspace. Well, we can, if we all make a crosswind call, the one around the crosswind, that should give us adequate spacing on the departure. Perfect. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, so I'll make the call in a sec. I'll see you up there, guys. Get any questions, just let us know. See you up there, safe flying, and I'm remaining on Discord this evening. Yeah. Nice. Come on. Well, we'll like that. Valley traffic. Reporter, Pilot Club 25, taxi to 35, Head Valley. So trying to get used to the uh, Pilot Club call sign. <laughs> yeah. Penn Valley traffic, November India, Kilo taxi into the runway. Traffic, Pilot Club 33 is at the main ramp, taxiing runway 33, Penn Valley. Careful. This is how we get hurt. What are you doing back there? Watch my cable.
You know, I swear, switching up call signs really does throw a bone at everything I'm doing right now. It's strange. Oh, well, I, yeah, you can use the things. <laughs> oh, man, it's messing me up. I feel like a newbie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I totally get it there. The first time I switched over to Pilot Club 3, it really threw me off. Oh, yes. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> <laughs> Penn Valley traffic, Pilot Club 117 is taxiing to runway 35. Uh, Penn Valley traffic, November India, Kayla taking off of 35, making a left downwind. Penn Valley traffic. Penn Valley traffic, 423 Charter Lima, Mike, entering the crosswind. Penn Valley traffic. Excuse me. The airplane is running. We don't open doors. Penn Valley traffic, 423 Charter Lima on downwind. Kilo Sierra Echo Golf Airport in Idaho, right? Idaho, yeah. We're gonna have to uh, make that special. Oh yeah, with those crashes. Don't lose a lot of Oh yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, that's a tough one. But it's so good, though. Chandler, are you coming? I know you went to the Idaho ones before, right? Yes, yes, I, I really enjoy those. Yeah, Jacob, Julian. I know Michael's been on them before. Oh, Michael, that was funny, too, with Michael. But, uh, uh, oh, Lower Loon. Well, when is the flight? Uh, uh, next week, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I have to see school stuff. So. Ah, I hear ya. Yeah. But I'll see. If I can, I will most definitely go. Oh, it's a blast. Yeah, I love <laughs> this club. I'll be ready for Laura Loon next time. <laughs> yeah, I still remember watching your uh, video on it. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, I love the Loon. Hey guys, what's going on? It's, uh, it's Scott. Scott. Yeah, the controller here on Potomac. Yeah, um, what's up, Scott? Hey, uh, just was wondering what your guys' plan was. I, uh, I thought I'd pop on for you guys. Not sure if you guys are going to want to talk to me. Um, you guys are probably going to have to at some point going through the Bravo down in the College Park. Or you guys might take that New Orleans route. I just wanted to see kind of what your guys' plan was. Uh, oh. On that that aspect. What I did was I had sent a message uh, to you guys about it. I wanted to take advantage of that special, you know, to get into that area. But I guess uh, uh -huh. okay. they said that you guys would follow it. So uh, no biggie. So what I decided yeah. to do was yeah. blow the Bravo. So yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that swamp. Looks like you got cloudy on us. Mm -hmm. Where. Uh, Lee Airport is uh, okay. Alpha yeah. November pop up. We're just gonna right. go down to probably about 3,000 feet there. Yeah. And then as soon as we get to that inner ring, we're gonna drop down below 1,500 feet. Perfect. So yeah. Because that, I'm sure you're already aware, but the outer layer of the Bravo is uh, 3,500 up to 10. Mm -hmm. The next one in is gonna be 2,500 to 10, which is covered basically Lee. Um, and then you got the College Park, which is under the uh, 1,500 to 1,000 Bravo. Uh, but there shouldn't really be any uh, buildings or anything in here as the way. The MIA in that area is uh, minimum on route altitude. It's uh, about 2,000 feet, so I can't really guarantee there are not, aren't going to be any obstacles at that altitude. But, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's your guys' choice. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it, but if you yeah. could for me, so, uh, yeah. Um, if you could keep an eye on this, and I if got any of the guys must in the airspace, if you could uh, message them and look for them. I would for sure do that. Yeah, can we pop keep an eye on it, for you. Yeah, we'll do for you. Give me one moment.
That's awesome. Yeah, you know, that'll be good. And you can message anybody that does anything that's going out of line. Yep, extra set of eyes. Yeah. When you hit the river, where do you go next? Oh, you're kind of going to just follow the river, just straight southeast to the next fix, which is the C-I-D-O-B, sit off. B-I-T. Oh. I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see that one. Yeah, sorry about that. Just had to hand a guy off the unicorn. Um, yeah, no, for sure. I got you. I will uh, definitely do that for you. Oh, you're the best. I appreciate it. Yeah, do not we, a problem. Do we follow the river left or right? Oh, uh, left ish, southeast. Left is okay. See, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for that fix right now. I don't see it. Basically, go to where the river widens up to the southeast end of that big Charlie basin. Indian. You basically got to go to the southeast end of that big basin where the river widens up for your next fix. like the next fix is right here at the southeast end of this wide basin at the end of the river. Yeah, that, that's the Charles India Delta separated corridor where if you're flying eastbound you have to be you know basically a thousand feet above those who are going southwest or southeastbound um i'm sorry i got that mixed up if you're going west uh if you're going westbound through there it's a thousand feet above the guys that are going eastbound um which could have been kind of cool for you guys but you know i i'm not really trained on it so i couldn't really give you guys as much of a realistic experience going through it i could do my best if you guys would like um but then again, it's, it would be a little bit sloppy just because I'm not specifically trained on it. If I wanted to go through it in my free time, which I have, you know, I've kind of looked it over a bit. Um, but then again, it, it just kind of comes down to what we're specifically trained on. So, I, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit above my pay grade. You know, Scott, I mean, honestly, don't worry about it just because of the fact that, from what I understand, this, um, I was going to the headquarters place in the dump. Oh, yeah. I guess yeah. they're just left this place a mess, so we're going to have to come back. And, uh, next time. Next time. This up. So, well, next <laughs> time, no, we can make this whole flight and we'll oh, yeah. follow the corridor. Yeah, And for I'll sure. link up with you and we'll uh, get some going. That works, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm always in the Discord. Um, I'm basically, I'm a ZDC controller. I'm a, I'm a uh, in ZDC, so I'm basically certified for most of Potomac, um, all the towers, grounds, everything on that range. Uh, Approach-wise, I'm certified for Baltimore, currently working on Shenandoah, probably for Shenandoah, we need the Dulles sector. Uh, I'll probably be done with that in a couple of days, and then we'll head over to Mount Vernon, which is, uh, which is BCA. Um, other than that, I'm, uh, 
I'm started over in Memphis, so I, I control all of Memphis Approach, Nashville, Little Rock, any of that stuff over there. Um, currently working on uh, Seattle, so I'm, that'll be my next step. Uh, and I'm also started down in San Juan FIR, down in the Caribbean. Um, so if you guys are ever thinking of doing some island hopping or something like that, uh, I'm certified mm -hmm. for everything, including Princess Juliana, which is kind of a cool airport because it kind of mixes FAA phraseology with the, the European and Geo phraseology. Um, so it's kind of a little mix of both. Um, cool little area down there in the, the Caribbean. Um, but if you ever are doing a group flight in one of those areas, just feel free to send me a message. I will be more than happy to hop on for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, Scott. Thanks, man. We yeah. you know, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, not a problem anytime. Um, and uh, is it Sergi? Serge, yeah. Serge, yeah. Um, I was meaning to get you the uh, that footage from the uh, Baltimore cloud a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I got all the footage. I, I recorded the entire event. Um, I've just been super, super busy recently, so I haven't had the time to really put it through uh, through the time lapse maker. I call it. Uh, I just get the time lapse going, but I will. Uh, I'll try and get that out to you as soon as I can. Um, yeah, no, no worries, man. No worries. Yeah, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool for you to oh, check I, it out. Oh, well, absolutely. If you don't mind, we'll go. We'll, uh, we'll, you know, put it on the website, put it in the Discord there. It's, it's good for people to take a look. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, for sure. I will, uh, again, I'll do my best to try and pop that out for you. Um, yeah. Yep, thanks, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Not a problem. Anytime. Uh, yeah, that was a fun event. I was uh, I was happy to, to control that for you guys. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I wish uh, I wish we had some, uh, some more experienced ground controllers for that event. But then again, who am I to to say anything about it. I'm not the uh, events team, so I don't really put it together. I just control for it. Um, yeah, and that's, that's okay, you know. I mean, just like, you know, our club has more experienced guys, less experienced guys ever, so it's, yeah. it works out all right. All right, exactly. What? Um, I'm actually just I'm looking at uh, Fantastic right now. I see those Mike, uh, those Mike little tiny Charles numbers. Flying over you guys just in it tells me there. how many frames uh, per second. Feet going boss the Charlotte. computer's generating. Yeah, he's, uh, he's flying. What's he flying? Tina? When it jumps the, below uh, 20, uh, okay. that's when I start to have problems. Of course he is. <laughs> Give me just one moment. I gotta get a quick track. Yeah, no problem. So that's good. All right. So everybody's kind of following the line there. It looks good. Paulie's almost at the, uh, oh, who's uh, 724 Papa Golf? He's, uh, he's doing his own thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright, that's uh... It's going to be, uh, if you guys tune into my stream here, it's kind of cool to see your little stream coming down. Uh, <laughs> coming down through the uh, east side of the, my sector there. Oh, well, that'd be awesome. Hey, can you, can you snap up some of Yeah, I would love that. For sure. Yeah, let me grab that for you. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, no, 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 no.
there's your uh, your old your uh, stream there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, I, I love the Chesapeake airspace. It's so cool because you got you know, it's it's named after the Chesapeake, the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so it's cool to kind of fly down there through the bay. Uh, one of my favorite approaches, I think, probably ever, uh, is flying into Martin State there, Kilo Mike, Tango November. Uh, if coming in just over the water, um, I forget the runway. It might be on a 33. I can't can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but you come in right over the water, right over this little road there, uh, and then you touch down. Um, but it's cool to just like, if you're flying based out of there, uh, you just kind of depart out of there and just fly around the Chesapeake every day. I, that could be uh, that could be really cool. Uh, the, the weather conditions. What do you think all those lines down. are? Um, you know, on, on the east part of it, uh, it could be clear skies while in the west or Baltimore. It might be just absolute crap. Uh, so it's, yeah. just, it's kind of cool to see how that is being right on the coast. Uh, definitely a neat little. Piece Maybe. Of yeah, I've landed at, uh, at, uh, at Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, remember that. Fun. I remember that approach. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. Uh, I've got I've got some friends at uh, Plata Martin IRL. Um, so it's they, they always send me these these screenshots and it makes me so jealous. I'm just looking at it. And they're you know they're just coming down over the water there. Uh, actually, my first uh, Delta private jet I've seen. Uh, we were driving up to New York. Uh, and there was a Delta private jet flying out of Martin that day. Uh, they departed right over us. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was neat. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing, you know, we, uh, you know, Paulie puts the flight together in these flights, and there's so many different like cool areas to check out and you know, right, yeah. do, we try to mix it up a little bit like uh, you know, do some bush flying and then do some crossfire type things and then uh, what else Paulie like you got all kinds of different things planned there's always so many cool places to visit you know yeah no it's it's definitely cool seeing your names pop up I see the uh, the TPC fall sign all the time Oh, cool! Um, it's kind of flying around. It's it's always fun because you know every time every encounter I've had with one of the uh, pilot club pilots, it's always been a positive. It's always been very positive, and uh, you know, 95 percent of the time, knock on wood, uh, the pilots really know what they're doing. So it's you guys are clearly doing something right. Well, we appreciate that. We uh, like to hear that that kind of feedback. Um, as obviously we, you know, we strive to do the, the, the best we can on the network. So, <laughs> there you go. Well, and that was initially our goal is to, to really have. You know, it's, it's a club that's open to everybody and those who need some training and help that we're working on uh, becoming an NTO. Okay, very good. Cool. Right. So, yeah, so we, we have some things in place really to formalize the training process and, um, uh, you know, those who need it, it's there. Yeah. Those who don't, it's fine. But And then informally it happens a lot in the club. We have a lot of experienced guys who are, you know, real-world pilots and... Uh, and just experience flights and guys and yeah. you know, they help out. Yeah, and we, you know, we really, really need something like that on Vatson because it's like we have a couple. We have uh, the Vat Star training. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, we got Wings Over Boston, which is which is a great, great idea. Um, it's it really it helps the pilots, but at the same time, I think there's something that like, for example, like that. Uh, what is it? Uh, on blank on that star uh like having something like that is is an amazing thing there's a lot of pilots that can, you know recently come into bad sim not really knowing what they're doing and they'll just they'll think yeah. you know i'll just hop right on i'll start flying and you know and 
something happens, I'll try and fix it. When, in reality, when the controller's got a super busy final box and whatnot, and it's got a lot of aircraft to deal with, then there's that one single pilot that doesn't really know what they're doing and they're trying to figure things out, you know, yeah. that, that screws us up. So I've, uh, I've actually brought up some ideas with some of the uh, Pat USA staff um, to kind of to, to help those pilots um, kind of get get on the ropes um, of yeah. talking APC and whatnot. And the thing is, it's like a lot of them, they, they have the um, they have the tools required to really get it, like to get a found understanding of it. But at the same time, some of them don't use it. So, uh, so the thing I was, my recommendation, um, which, you know, let me know what you think about it, but I think it's, I thought it was a good idea. Um, introducing quote unquote pilot deviations where it's not necessarily like something where you're in major trouble that it's like, <laughs> it's not like you're gonna really lose your pilot's license, but it'll kind of add a little bit of realism to the uh, to the flying experience where it'll be something like, such as like, if you bust the Bravo or something like that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, when, if I was talking to that aircraft, I'll say something like, you know, advise, ready to copy phone number, something like that. And then I'll give them, there'll be like one singular phone number that all the controllers will give the pilots. When they call that number, it'll tell them to like a certain thing, uh, like an automated voice message essentially, um, that they can just use on a cheap burner phone. You know, it doesn't even have to cost them much, but uh, it'll send them right to a voicemail and it'll tell them what to do, like go to the Batson website, power report, or something like that. Uh, for the controller side of things, you know, we'll have our little paperwork that we can fill out just to add a little bit of realism to make it seem like it's real. Because uh, in the real world, the way they do it is if somebody gets a pilot deviation, first thing they do, they give them that phone number, the aircraft calls the tower, and they file the uh, they file the paperwork. So adding something, you know, uh, nothing like too crazy that's going to take the controller a lot of time, but just something that increases the realism for them a little bit that makes it seem like they're really giving that a, you know, quote-unquote pilot deviation. When really it's just, it'll, the, uh, the pilot just getting an email saying, hey, on this date, this time and date, under this call sign, you bust to the Washington Glass Bravo airspace, something like that, and then it'll have a little tip or uh, something to help them, uh, like a, even like a sky vector chart or a, uh, a sectional chart saying, like, you know, this is where you were at, this is the Bravo, this is the shelf that you were at, and just like a little, uh, just a little thing to help them out. Uh, and then if they get a certain number of pilot deviations, then they'll actually get a real pilot deviation for just a couple of days, uh, depending on the severity of the, of the incidents that they've had. But I think if they did something like that, if we added a uh, quote-unquote... Uh, We've got about 20 minutes uh, left of the flight. Blank and line. If we added just some sort of like quote-unquote quant consequence, uh, that it'll really kind of yeah. dawn on them that it's like, you know, it's not really a joke. It's, it's, it's for fun, for sure. But we also want you to kind of, we want you to have something to learn from. So if it's like, if there's no consequences and it's just kind of like you can free for all, there's not really going to be much learning. So I think that'll definitely help people learn. Um, I, I you know, it's like, that realism, to be honest. What? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I do like the, I do like the realism idea. And I'm all like 100% realist with how this would be implemented is going to be very yeah. important because it, it yeah. may potentially turn, turn a lot of people off. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's the thing I was uh, I was talking to them about. Um, and the thing about it would be, it's not like the controller is just going to go and issue a pilot deviation for every little thing the pilot does. It's not yeah. going to be like you know, if you take a left turn onto a taxiway instead of a right turn, that's not going to be a pilot deviation. That in the real world won't be a pilot deviation. Yeah. Something like pilot deviation would be something like you know, busting a Bravo. Um, or, yeah. or just just bigger things, things that'll real that could actually how about, like how about cross the up. Scott, how about crossing uh, an extra Broadway without a crew? Yeah, that definitely. You know, we get that all the time. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll message the pilot and we'll be like, hey, you just crossed the runway. And because there's no these there's no consequences, nine times out of ten they'll just be like, okay, my bad. And it's yeah. like, and then that's it. So yeah, it's so I think turn a lot of way, I think at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, we, we yeah. really need that. And the thing is, it's like, I'm all for, you know, new pilots and pilots learning Batson and whatnot. Like, I, I love that. But at the same time, there has to be a, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance between those that really, really know what they're doing and that, that solid understanding of it and the newer pilots. Because it's like, if you're getting, 
again, nine times out of 10, you're getting only new pilots, then it doesn't make the controller's experience any fun. It's just, yeah. it's, it's like, it, honestly, sometimes I, I, I not gonna lie, I kind of dread getting on, because it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to deal with all these new pilots that don't know what they're doing. Um, and so it's, it makes things a little bit stressful, uh, just because when you're trying to deal with the, uh, the bigger guys that really know what they're doing, uh, and guys coming in on 767s and whatnot, and then you got this one little old Cessna that goes right through Bravo into your final path, that's gonna screw up your entire night. So, yeah, so I think it's it, it definitely would create a, uh, a good balance um, in that aspect. Yeah, we, I, we love realism. I think uh, most of our folks, you know, get on Batson to get that full immersion. You know? Yeah. So anything that adds to that, but you got to remember that, I mean, there's got to be, I think, a, an educational piece for a lot of the new, you know, newer oh, yeah, pilots. For sure. yeah. yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. And, and like I said, it's not going to be something that it's like, it's like if you do one little thing, it's going to be a pilot deviation yeah. you're, you're not going to be able to fly bats and never again. It's just going to be like, even if you get one or two or three pilot deviations, it's not... That's not going to be like the last time you fly in bats. It's just going to be the point where they send you a little email. It's just like a little reminder. Hey, you know, we busted a Bravo. Don't yeah. do that again. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that would actually do would just really help out the pilots um, more than anything. I'm all for it. Oh, yeah. I think there needs to be a lot more pilot accountability on that sim. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, because that's yeah, exactly. Thank you, Paul. Uh, or is that Michael? Yeah. Michael. Because um, that, at the same time, it's it's like us controllers. We we put in the time to try and get trained and you know understand yeah. these sort of things. Whereas the pilots, they don't need the training. Um, they don't they don't yeah. get the training when it's offered to them. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love Pilot Club. It's, it's a great great idea uh, where you can do group flights with with other people with ATC. And if you have questions, you know you have those sort of people to ask. Um, yeah which is great, uh, but I, I don't think that there's enough pilots that really take advantage of the resources that they're given. Because the thing with Batson is it's like one of the really cool things is there are so many resources that are given to them, uh, which basically everybody in this room and everybody in the Discord in general uh, are all taken advantage of, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, definitely nice to see. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, for us controllers, I don't want to... I don't want to sound rude or anything, but like for us controllers, we, we put in, uh, you know, I've, I've been controlling for about two years or so now. I have nearly a thousand controlling hours um, yeah. on the scope. So, you know, I, I've put in my time. I feel like it's kind of time for some of the pilots to really put in theirs. Um, which again, for you guys, you guys are doing a great job of it. Well, th thanks, guys. I think, you know what, it's like, and I totally agree. I can never understand you guys because you have to get all the certifications and all the training and all the check uh, OBSs or whatever. And, yeah. and then uh, anybody like a pilot, all you, you got to do is take that little test and here you are. So yeah. I never forget that. But I think, I mean, VetGov is really uh, was concentrating on getting the numbers up, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but but what that does then is it, is it you know it brings a lot of folks who don't know what they're doing and they you know it, they make it uh, they make it uh, you know less realistic for uh, for the rest yeah. of the folks, including you guys. Yeah. yeah. I get it. And and even like not even just for us controllers, but even for like the more, more experienced pilots, hearing that little pilot on frequency that just doesn't know what they're doing. For you know sure. that can that can ruin their entire experience as well, and yeah. and that's kind of that's definitely something that's turned away as well. Is is a lot of like the really experienced pilots that really know what they're doing. A lot of those guys they're just going over to Pilot Edge, which is because yeah. not only is it paid, but it's also, um, you know, they it's the, the controllers know what they're doing. The rest of the pilots know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, Hey, Paul, you're at, uh, where are you at? You're at Paleo? Yeah, yeah. I'm coming up Paleo now. I'm at 2,000, uh, 1,800 feet at Paleo. And I'm just going to remain at 1,800 flying over Lee. And, um, and then, yeah, as soon as I start getting towards freeway, Whiskey 00, zero it's going to drop down to 1,300. Yeah, 1,400. And that should already be traffic power and altitude, I would imagine. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to take a look oh, here. Oh, park zone 48 feet. Sorry, 1,000 feet. I'll do another feet. Uh, okay. Honestly, instead of sending the guys a message in here, I'll just send it to, I'll just let you guys know. Uh, never more, uh, what is that? Any Alpha Kilo, you're, uh, you're getting a little close there. Uh, uh, right, you're right. going to be at just, just about a mile to get beneath that Prada there. Yeah, so you're, you got to drop down a couple hundred feet right there. I will be, sorry. No, you're good. I'm just letting you know. Um, yeah, so that outer ring, which is, again, just about a mile in front of you there, uh, spans from 3,500 up to 10,000 feet AGL. So you just want to stay below that 3,500. Even 3,400 technically works. Uh, it's better to be lower just for from the controller's perspective. Uh, but then again, it's uh, as long as you're beneath that, that outer ring, it's not bothering you. What is the next fix after Cedo over five? Swan. Cedo Alpha Papa Golf Airport information. November zero 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 five Zulu weather wind three one one at eight visibility one zero sky condition ceiling six thousand broken temperature one dew point minus eight altimeter three zero two two advice on initial contact three zero two two. Swan, uh, 3,400, anything below 3,500. So yeah, Swan's, Swan's right there on that, uh, literally right on the line for that outer ring. Um, so yeah, so you want to try and cross it right around 3,400 range or, or less. sometimes on the 2000 mark for those IFR guys. Uh, anything kind of within that range is where we tend to keep them. 
Uh, we we don't obviously Baltimore is a pretty major field. It's quite a bit of traffic in the real world, so we uh, we try and keep all you know smaller planes and aircraft. And this is pretty much true for most facilities. Is we try and keep them either low and slow or just out of out of range from any uh, other aircraft such as like the airliners that are flying in. Um, so yeah, so right around like the 2,500 range is kind of a valid, uh, valid altitude for that area. All right, good to know, I was just curious. Yeah, no, you're good. Sometimes I just find it easier to request a transition than to avoid the area. Can I do straight in? Got a long evening ahead of us, gentlemen. Are you guys uh, heading somewhere next? No, they're going to be cleaning the uh, <laughs> Idol Club headquarters. That's where we're going. Ah, uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, so the headquarters are at College Park. Yeah. Oh, neat. I was. I did not know that. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, College Park's uh, a neat little airport there. I was actually just at the University of Maryland the other day. Um, so you know, kind of same area. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. You uh, familiar with uh, where Beltsville is? Uh, that's like northeast, I want to say, of it. Yeah, it's it's close. It's five minutes away from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, somewhat familiar with it. I'm kind of on the uh, the other side of D.C. Okay. Uh, towards the Virginia side. Gotcha. About the 137 for now, turn left heading 100.
Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I was just talking with a uh, Delta pilot on my frequency. Um, <laughs> and he's, uh, he wanted to divert into Baltimore. Um, and I was talking to him and I said, uh, he, he joined, he was joining the uh, Anthem 3 arrival into Baltimore. Uh, and I put him direct to a, one of the fixes. Uh, and he, I, I told him if he needs some vectors for decent, I can do that. Um, because the waypoint I can't kind of gave him to, technically you want to cross it between 6,000 and 500 feet. Um, and I said, you're going to need a really, really good rate to descend down there. Um, but he said, uh, he told me, don't underestimate us. And he's just absolutely dropping it out of the sky right now. He was just at 1,400 on the last uh, last update. He's down down to 9,400. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, well, let's see how this goes. I mean, he's, his speed's actually dropping slightly. I, uh, I, <laughs> he's actually... Genuinely define the laws of physics. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just sitting here watching him, and he's just dropping it. Let's go. Yeah. Well, we'll see if he makes it. Yeah. Would that be Dallas 137? It would be Delta 137. Yeah. I'm sorry, Delta. Yeah, I got him off of my right wing right now, and I'm literally watching him drop. Yeah. Wow. How's that look for you? <laughs> Where is he at? Oh, I... Oh, oh, I see him. Yeah. He's to my right plane. Let me see. Let yeah, see he's... Uh, he won't affect you guys. He's going to level up 4,000. Yeah, it's a little too far for me. I can't see him. I see him on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> he is booking it. stuck mic.
in some areas where it's more congested, I have to change my level of detail, my LOD radius, to maintain frame rate. The DC area is pretty... Uh, Guys, don't forget to make your calls on Unicom, please. Pretty heavy area. Kilo, November, Alpha, Kilo, airport information, Quebec, zero, 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 five, Zulu, weather, wind, three, zero, six, at seven, visibility, one, zero, sky condition, six, thousand, scattered temperature, four, two point, minus, eight, altimeter, three, zero, two, one, advise on initial contact, you have, <laughs> three, zero, I think two, some, one, uh, yeah, there's some uh, there's some bunks in the, uh, <laughs> in the, in the, uh, hangar. Thousand feet or something like that. Three thousand, four thousand feet. Twenty-six hundred. Holy crap! Damn. Yeah. 
it scared like it scared. that is a teeny run thing. That's massive. <laughs> Charlie Lima, on a two-mile final 
for runway 33, College Park traffic. Crossing over in midfield to join the left down wind 33 in College Park. East at 1,500. Gonna be crossing over midfield. Join the left down 133. College Park. Okay, thanks guys. I've got to go. I appreciate the flight. Thanks for coming. I'll see you next week. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Have fun. Happy Thanksgiving. Pattern altitude. College Park traffic, Skyhawk Pilot Club 33 is crossing over midfield to join the left downwind for three. College Park. College Park traffic, Skyhawk Pilot Club 6 is about two miles east uh, in our attempt to, to cross midfield uh, for left downwind 33. College Park. Skyhawk Pilot Club 33, left down wind 33, College Park. Alright, power 15. 
laps 10. Look for 80. College Park traffic, Skyhawk Pilot Club 6 is crossing midfield um, at uh, about 1100 uh, for left downwind 33. Park traffic, Skyhawk, the Pilot Club 33, left base 33. College Park traffic, Pilot Club 33, base to final 33. Traffic, Pilot Club 33, three, final approach, 33, three, full stop. Flaps 2. Coast Park traffic, Skyhawk Pilot Club 6 is turning uh, left downwind for 3-3. Three, three. Uh, College Park. It's kind of tight getting in over those trees. College Park traffic, Pilot Club 33 is clear the runway and taxiing to the ramp. College Park. College Park traffic, Skyhawk Pilot Club 6 is turning left base for 33. Uh, College Park. Hey Paul. What's happening, Captain? Did you figure out your problem? No, not yet. I just wanted to uh, record. I'm just going to use another platform to record. Because um, I wanted those uh, Arkansas bush trips. I want to record that for set from Michael so I can see my crashes. Call traffic pilot couple one seven turning crosswind. Yes, you should definitely get that fixed then, Paul. I can try to fix that. Coast Park traffic, Skyfall Park Club 6 is turning two mile final, runway 33 full stop, uh, College Park. Hang on one second, I know uh, I hear the Unicom going off, I'm sorry, hang on one second. All right, good. All right, parking brake on. Lights on. I was just waiting for everybody to get in. Have y'all taken off yet? Alright, well, let me go ahead and shut her down. The lights off. Avionics going off. Max off. Master off. We'll wait to see Pilot Club 6 do his landing. College traffic, Pilot Club 117, turning left downwind for runway 33. And there's Pilot Club 6 coming in. Well, Serge has finally at least landed, so he's got the key, so we can get inside and stop <laughs> shoveling the shit. 
<laughs> Caps yep, over got the here. Hey, this is one of those lead by example scenarios, right? <laughs> yes. Well, he's got, he's got to he he needs to teach everybody how to do it, so he's got to so. Nah, actually, uh, you guys get started. I need to go get some supplies in the store. <laughs> well, Nothing. All right. Pick me up some beer. Oh, uh, what supplies? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, some supplies. <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank you all yeah, for playing I'm, publicity. I need a name for those supplies. Like, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> He's trying to get out of it. All right. Thanks for playing, and we'll catch you next time.